Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're tearing into the four speed. At the end of this video, I'm gonna go in greater detail about more technical aspects of the T18 variations and stuff like that. So make sure you stick around to the end. First step, we'll take the six bolts out of the shift cover. And we'll go ahead and get that out of the way. These come off with the 9 16th socket. Somehow or another, there's always that one bolt you just can't seem to get to. Now, as I go, I'm a big believer in labeling and bagging everything up. That way, when you go to put it all back together, it's real straightforward. You don't get nothing mixed up. First look at the gears. So far, I'm not seeing anything too concerning. That's kind of normal, some rounding right there. I am noticing that the synchronizers are kind of discolored. They're not real brass looking. That might be a normal thing on these, but I'm used to seeing synchronizers that are real bright brass. All right, so next step, we gotta get this rear output off. So this is what drives your speedo cable. I'm kind of surprised it's plastic. There's a little snap ring right here holding it on, so we're gonna go ahead and get that off. These right here are the best snap ring pliers. I've used them a bunch, took a bunch of transmissions, transfer cases apart with them. Made in USA, they're Proto brand. I'll have them linked down in the description. I think I got these off Amazon, but they're totally worth the money. And when you're gonna be doing something like this, even just like a little T90 or something, you're gonna want a pair of these. This right here is the front bearing retainer. We got four bolts in it. We'll go ahead and take that off. So this right here is gonna be your front input bearing. You can see there's a snap ring there and there's also a snap ring right here behind it that clips onto the bearing. It's a similar thing on the output. So the next thing we need to do is get this bearing pulled off this shaft. This is pressed on, get that snap ring, come in behind here with a brass drift See if we can knock it out just a little bit and then I've got a bearing puller we're gonna put on it. See if we can get that thing to come off. Now I'm gonna take a brass punch. You wanna use brass, don't use steel on steel. That's how you break and damage things. I'm gonna come in behind that bearing right there and see if I can tap it forward enough to get that puller on it. Bought this little kit off Amazon. It's pretty cheap, comes with two different size pullers. There's this smaller jaw, this bigger jaw. These are all your standoffs. The studs it comes with though for the bigger jaw are not nearly long enough to pull that bearing off. I went to Lowe's and got some half inch 13 all thread, or you could use like an eight inch bolt. But I think at the time, this was actually cheaper than buying two eight inch bolts.
Well, that went pretty smooth. I've already got the bearing in a bag. There is this little washer that goes behind it. I'm not exactly sure what the purpose is, if it's a shim or what have you. There is a slight difference in the front and back. I always like to take a picture or video exactly how it comes off. That way when I put it back on, it'll be exactly the way it was. So this looks like the raised part goes to the front and the recessed part goes to the back. Before we can get this input shaft out, and this is full of a bunch of little needle bearings. When you pull that out, they're all gonna fall out. I've gotta do the same thing back here. I gotta get that snap ring, pull this bearing off, and then this whole cluster of gears should come off first and then the input second. Okay, so in order for all this to come out, to get past this little reverse shifter fork deal, this right here has to be slid all the way up as far as it can go in order to clear that. That was a little bit of work to get all this out to kind of get it just right where it'd come up out of here. One other thing I did, this counter shaft right here that holds this bottom cluster gear, I went ahead and drove it out. I didn't film it, but all you do, there's a little tab here. This tab right here, it's got one bolt in it that holds it on right there and that holds them two counter shafts in there. This will be for your reverse gear and this is for that cluster gear. You drive these this way towards where the locking tab is at. If you try to knock it out this way, this is a press fit hole. It's gonna bind up or you might even end up cracking your case. Since I've already got this shaft knocked out, the cluster gear should go ahead and lift out too. So the last thing we got down in here is that reverse gear. Of course, the reverse shift fork that moves that back and forth. I did notice that magnet down in there. It's got a bunch of little chips on it, a bunch of little shavings. It even looks like some little chunks of metal. And then there's a bunch of little roller bearings I dumped out when I was getting all that stuff out. That's no big deal. Also, I didn't see anything bad on the gears, but we'll inspect them a little bit better once we get everything cleaned up. So to get this counter shaft out, I put two extensions together. This is a broken extension. And I know I said don't use steel on steel. I've never been able to get these shafts out with brass. You always end up just mushrooming it or bending your punch. These are really hard too. So if you get it good and square, you shouldn't have any problem getting it out. Now to get to this one, you've really got to come in through your input bearing hole right here and kind of snake it around and hit it from right there. It's kind of hard to do. That's how I've done it in the past. I don't know if they actually make something to stick down in there and push it out. I'm gonna try and get that shaft knocked out though, and then we'll be done tearing this case apart. All right, y'all, so I think that's about as far as I'm gonna go with this. I'm gonna leave all that stuff on that main shaft so that way when I go to do the rebuild, it'll already be organized, I won't have to label it as much. Next step, I gotta get all this cleaned up, get that case cleaned up. There's some modifications I've gotta to make to that case and we'll talk more about that in a future video. I want to go ahead and give y'all some information though on the T18 so you know what you're looking for. So this particular T18 I'm using is out of a Ford truck, is late 70s, I wanna say a 78. Novak has a great write up on these and they've got a ton of information about like the serial numbers on the side and everything. I'll link that down below. A few good things to know though, so a T98 came before the T18. It's also a four speed, slightly lower first gear. You could actually get a T98 behind an F head in a Jeep from the factory in like the late 60s, but they're extremely rare. I've never seen one. The problem I have with the T98 is the same problem I have with the SM420 it is they're really old. It's hard to find parts for them. Parts are more readily available for this transmission. 
Now when you start hunting for one of these transmissions, there's a 632 to one first gear, and then there's a four to one first gear. The four to ones are not really that desirable. I'd stay away from those. It doesn't really make it worth the swap when you could just do like a T90C upgrade and get you pretty close to that. We're speaking of T90C, if you didn't watch the first video in this series, I encourage you to go back, check it out. It's got a bunch of numbers and a bunch of information about first gears and stuff like that. Now, like I said, this came out of a Ford truck, but they also use these transmissions in Jeeps and internationals as well. What's crazy is even though they're all Borg Warner T18s, none of them are the same, not a lot interchanges between the two. You can find the Jeep ones with the Dana 20 already adapted to it, which will save you a bunch of money if you can get for the right price. The international ones also, I think it was kind of a short run. They went on to the T19, which Ford used the T19 also. I don't think Jeep ever did. And that just gave you a synchronized first gear. Well, this thing coming right along, this wasn't too bad. If I had to be honest, I think the worst part of this whole teardown was those snap rings in front of those bearings. A good pair of snap ring pliers makes that a lot easier. I'll have those linked down in the description as well as the bearing puller I used. I'm excited to be getting into this project. I've spent so much time planning for this, planning the swap out, and it's awesome that it's finally happening. With that being said, make sure your post notifications are on. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any of this. I really appreciate y'all checking out this week's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see y'all next time.